I remember the horses got round at the start, the music played. The 2022 Everest was all about nature strip and the up and coming giga kick. And they're going in. The atmosphere on track was electric. The gates are back, they're off and racing. He was fairly far back in the run. Eduardo and nature strip, head and head up the rise and a thriller here on the Everest. He just laid back his ears and charged. Came over past James of Rose, Jack and out and giga kick. I think you might have seen me dancing and carrying on. And the rest is history. Giga Kick down the outside wins the Everest. The unbeaten three rolls done it. Giga Kick has won the Everest. The first unbeaten horse to win the Tab Everest. The three year old, the longest price winner in the history of the race, has stormed past the best sprinter in the world to create a huge upset. Craig Williams. How's Giga Kick going to go this year? They'll have to beat him again. In 2017, Racing New South Wales Chief Executive Peter Volandis had an idea that turned racing in Australia on its head. Normally, horses have to qualify to enter a race. In the Everest, slot holders buy a slot. The reason why someone wants to buy a slot is the prize money. Last year, $15 million. That makes the Everest the richest race on turf in the world. This is what the Everest is all about, the slot. There are 12 slots in the Everest, and each one costs $700,000. Once a slot holder has bought the slot, the deal making begins. Slot holders are chasing the owners and trainers of the fastest horses. Trainers are putting their horses in races leading up to the Everest to try and catch their eye. It all comes down to the deal. The Everest may be a sprint, but the race to get into it is a marathon. Clayton Douglas is a 28-year-old trainer with a freakishly fast horse called Giga Kick. It burst out of nowhere last year to win the Everest and make Clayton the youngest ever trainer to lift the trophy. Oh, he's awesome. He'd, he'd, uh... His fitness is very good and I'm really happy with how he is. So light trot around the back track here, it's a very quiet track. Make sure his action's okay, make sure he's feeling fine himself. But um, as you'll see, he's a, he's a beautiful horse to ride. He's come back from a, a break in, in great order. I know Clayton's very pleased with him, and I know he's he's developed and set. And uh, Clayton's quote was, "The boys turn into a man." So uh, let's hope that he can, um, you know, those outward looks show in his races, and he's he's gone on again to that next level. So we go and see him. Yeah, we should. Yeah. You sort of shot out of the blue, out of nowhere, didn't you, with this? It's an amazing story, it really mm. is. To think he won a maiden in the February mm. and to go into the October and win an Everest, it's a phenomenal feat. I don't know if any horse is going to do that ever again. Do you ride him yourself? Yeah, look, I ride him myself and I've ridden him from day one, mm. so I, I like to sort of keep routine. He's a flashy bugger. I've known Clayton ever since he was a, a jumping jockey, a flat jockey, and I knew he was a very good judge. I went down and trialled him. Clayton wasn't wrong. The horse had really come on. He's got the ability to be one of the best sprinters we have in Australia in time. You had to get Giga Kick up to New South Wales. How do you get him there? We sort of headed up the week before um, on, on the private truck. So, yeah, look, it's, it's, he obviously headed up with his mate Frankie. And Frankie's a little Shetland pony, and um, he's been Giga Kick's travelling companion for quite some time now. The herd animals in the fact that, you know, they, they do like having company. Generally speaking, we will, I'll be in the truck with him. I normally like to be alongside him. In the back? <laughs> yeah, look, I'd go in the back as well. So, <laughs> so uh, it's a pretty easy trip. Has the money made any difference to you? 
Oh, absolutely it has. Um, you know, I now own a house because of him. And what was the story with the slot? It's a little bit to it, and um, everyone needs to be happy with it. Mm. So, um, you know, it takes a little bit for everyone to be happy when there's a lot of prize money on the table. James, when did you first hear about the Everest? How does it work? Peter Volandis called me, and I remember it quite vividly. He was very emphatic on the phone, and he sounded so driven and excited about this idea. It was a model that was probably taken from the American version of the race, um, the Pegasus. Uh, and interestingly, the Pegasus didn't quite succeed, but, but Peter worked out how to engineer the Everest to make it work. So there are 12 slots, which means only 12 runners in the race. And at the time, the cost of the slot was 600,000 a year. So we've been paying Racing New South Wales 600,000 a year. And that allows us then to go and negotiate with uh, the owner and the trainer of a horse of our choosing to represent us in the race. You know, you don't have to have a horse to have a slot. People are, are leasing slots, they're selling slots, depending on the demand. It's probably one of the most unique parts of it. There's no set terms and conditions on how the prize money can be split or, or where, where, what way it can work. There is a return for the slot holders, but there's also the excitement. If you can find your own horse uh, and win all the, all the prize money or simply split it. So uh, it's a great and unique concept that's worked very well. It's talked about around the world. When you travel overseas, it's the first thing people want to talk about and, and how they've linked this race to Australian racing is quite unique and, and what is relatively a short period of time for, for the historic game we're in. Tonight we're extremely excited to be able to announce that prize money for the Tab Everest will increase from $15 million Australian to $20 million Australian. We're here at the TJ Smith with some of Australia's champion sprinters facing off. Nature Strip, Giga Kick, Marzoo and I Wish I Win. And the gates are back. They're off and racing. Marzu jumped nicely off the inside. In secret and Maria Mia was sharp into stride. I wish I win the last one. 600 metres to run and Nature Strip takes the lead clearly now. Going through the middle now is Giga Kick in the white cap. Nature Strip, Marzu, Giga Kick lengthening. And I wish I win down the outside. I wish I win went past Giga Kick, Marzu. I wish I win from last. A spectacular TJ win. I wish I win. Knocked off Giga Kick and Marzu. What a horse. What a horse. How good is this horse, Moots? Yeah, was, he's pretty special. Um, you know, we tried something different this time round, and, you know, he's running well without winning, so to be rewarded today was very special. And a big thanks to the Chittick family, uh, Mark and Pippa, they're down in the South Island, they'll be watching there. This horse has won the second richest race in Australia. You don't want to come back and win the richest? Probably have a couple of slot holders give us a good call tonight, will I? You reckon? <laughs> Blind chicken gets a bit more corn. Yeah, a lot more corn. We're getting the whole cob too. It's pretty big also. Well done, man. The biggest thing in Australia too, don't worry. <laughs> The 2023 TJ Smith Stakes was an epic race. We had Giga Kick, but along came a horse called I Wish I Win. Suddenly Australia had a new sprint star and slot holders were taking notice. The two day Scone Cup Carnival in mid-May becomes a destination point for the New South Wales and indeed Australian racing and breeding industry. All the major Hunter Valley studs are all located in and around Scone. What about the Everest? You've got a connection with the I Wish I Win crew. Why haven't you negotiated a deal by now? Well, as a slot hole, of course, we've got half the whip. The other part of the deal's with the owner of the horse. Yep. It feels like a natural marriage to me, but business is business and money is money. What if I put it to you this way? What if you missed out on I Wish I Win? Well, I'd be very disappointed. You've seen big races around the world. You've had runners in big races around the world. What's the Everest mean? Oh, I haven't had a runner in it yet, and it's the one race I'm really striving to have a runner, but it's the race where you basically need you know, one of the fastest horses in the world to get into it. First things first, I've got to try and find a, a horse fast enough, but to have a runner would be very special, and it's an amazing concept. We're about to head down to the Luskin Star Stakes here at Scone. This is a race which 
in the last six years has produced four winners to go on and contest the Everest. Who knows which horse will come out of today's race and possibly make the Everest field later this year. Gates are back. They're off and racing. Morella Panda was last out. Titanium Power won the start. Now Opal Ridge is on a wide pass through that from Barmos in front of Opal Ridge. Then Morella Bandit Steely. Titanium Power swings in front by two, two and a half lengths. The filly is starting to run on. She's five lengths away, but she's looking business. It's Titanium Power, two lengths clear. But Opal Ridge, the lone filly of the field. It's in that race in October even all at, oh. on the horizon at all? Or? Who knows mate, yeah. like, you know, we'll just like, we'll ride, the, we'll ride the trip. The success of the Everest has angered green-eyed racing bosses in other states. The stakes have never been higher. The court case is ongoing. So we're seeing, looking at all the documents, okay. which yeah. are mind-blowing to say the least, um, and then we'll decide what we do from there. Do you want to go there? Or? Oh, I think I'd leave that alone. Yeah. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.